Hi, I'm Matt Lieb. And I'm Vince Mancini. And this is Pod Pod Yourself yourself a a Gun. gun. A Sopranos podcast where Vince Mancini and I and a guest watch every single episode of The Sopranos and talk about it. I'm uh, very excited about this episode, not just because uh, it is one of the rare bad episodes of The Sopranos, but because (laughs) uh, our guest is uh, L.A. comedian and uh, homie of homies, uh, Carl Hess is on the show. How are you doing, Carl? Great to be here, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Uh, you uh, might know Carl from his uh, his food podcast, Yelling About Pate, or his uh, he did a cooking channel show called Food Fact or Fiction. And now mm-hmm. his credits will include Pod Yourself a Gun, the world's yeah. only best Sopranos podcast. Do you guys? You can do a whole. You can do a whole Sopranos po- podcast about just the food, really. Oh, oh yeah. honestly, I was thinking about that. I was like, in in this episode in particular, they talked yeah. about some sort of regat pie. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the tripe and tomatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know what? We could we could just talk about the food, and by we, I mean maybe you and Vince could. I don't know shit about food. <laughs> I did a, uh, I mean, I did the, I did a, a two Sopranos themed cooking challenges. I think for uh, Up Rocks, I made. I made the squid ink uh, and muscle pasta from the Italy episode. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah! Yes. And I think did that, you ever? Yeah. Did you make gabagool? <laughs> no, you don't really have to make gabagool. You can just buy it. Did you make yeah. the gabagool? Yeah. I you mean, just it's... get. You just get gabagool. Yeah. You get gabagool. Where do you get gabagool? Uh, at you, Satri- I got, I got, Satriali's, I got, I got. Satriali's pork Satriali's store. Pork I think. Store. Yeah. You gotta get gabagool at the grocery store. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> so fucking dumb. All right, before we get into the podcast, uh, we first must do what we always do and play the "Pod Yourself a Gun" theme song. Pod. 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 Podcast. Pod. 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 Podcast. All right. Why is it so funny? <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be that funny, but it's, it is. It's too, I just I don't understand the mechanics of why it's funny anymore because I've heard it so many times. But every time, <laughs> well, as a first timer, let me tell you, really hit the spot. Hey, yeah, it's a it's, real nice theme song. It'd be a shame oh, if someone would have come along and parody it. Eh. It'd be, It'd be a, shame. a shame if someone were to uh, do a low energy voiceover over <laughs> this very nice theme song uh, for comedic effect. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, today on Pod Yourself a Gun, we are talking about the episode Full Leather Jacket, Season 2, Episode 8. Um, and here is a brief synopsis uh, Although that we got Richie from... Although Richie is miffed mm-hmm. at Tony for forcing him to build a ramp for the pizza parlor owner he paralyzed, he decides to make a peace offering. Unhappy with their lowly status as Christopher's lackeys, Sean and Matt decide to pledge their allegiance to Richie through a violent, unexpected act. All right, and uh, so that's the that's the HBO Go synopsis. But let's let's talk. Let's get a little bit of context. Where were we in America when this episode came out? That's right. It's time to take a trip back to the Wayback that's Machine. That's right. I'm glad that you asked for the cultural context, Matt, because I have it. We're going all the way back. To March fifth, two thousand, the year. A simpler time. A simpler oh, yeah. time. Uh, some of the headlines that you may remember uh, from that day in history: uh, Tiger Woods overtook Michael Jordan as the uh, world's highest paid athlete. Nice. Uh, congrats, yeah. congrats to Tiger, dude. He was on top of the world back then. Top Tiger, of the world. Tiger Woods. Dude, his was... dad was happy. His dad stopped hitting him or whatever happened. He was yeah, probably right. fucking many girls right. and no one was giving a yeah. shit about He's like, it. There's He's... no way I'll ever get my comeuppance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's like, I can do Percocet and no one will care. <laughs> this this ride's never going bad. <laughs> Woods, 24, took home $47 million last year, up 75% from 1998, according to Forbes. 
Uh, Jordan, whose 1998 retirement forced him to get by on just his endorsement cash last year, earned only $40 million, according to Forbes, which published a list of the top earnings in sports and entertainment. Uh, other news. Uh, this one this one really hurts me to read. Voters seem to choose Bush, comma, Gore in primaries. Subhead. Americans are largely content with the nation's direction. Cool. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh Jesus! And that direction is straight yeah. into 9/11, and you really, <laughs> you really gotta love just like the before time of any period before something happens is always the most funny. Right? It's uh, adorable, I, almost. It, it is cute. I was actually watching um, a news clip from like I think it was like March 1st or something, um, and it was like uh, the CBS like nightly news. And on the docket, it was just like multiple things. It was like the primaries uh, are happening and uh, coronavirus is hurting this one particular country, China. What will happen to the stock market there? (laughs) And then the next story was a dog running for mayor (laughs) (laughs) straight up. And I was just like, this was like a month ago. A month ago, we were like, we got to put dog mayor up top in the docket. (laughs) People got to know. And now... (laughs) Look at us. Yeah, right. and that so that go, that Bush Gore primary was our uh, dog mayoral. That was story. our dog mayor. Yeah. 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 In wouldn't... fact, we had to we had dog president for a while, yeah. and then we had the Iraq War. Yeah. <laughs> this is a nice little hubris you got here. Be a shame if it you know came before a fall. Yeah, yeah be a shame if there was a nation shattering event that uh, would spoil this. <laughs> Uh, other headlines, uh, also from the St. Louis Dispatch, FBI calls Christian identity the nation's most dangerous hate group. Oh, that's fun. It's fun because uh, they are they are still the nation's most dangerous hate group. Yeah, well, we've uh, had, in term- we're, we're going to catch up to them any second now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very soon we'll topple that. Uh, but yeah, then, of course, not long after that, it was uh, Islam is the worst. And, uh, sure. And now it's just uh, no one's focusing on Christian identity now, or white know, identity. You know, it's the, it's the microbiobes that are the real terrorists. Yeah, exactly. It's just, uh, you know, it's white people have uh, an yeah. extra muscle in their calf that makes them hate brown people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the top movies were The Whole Nine Yards, mm-hmm. uh, The Next Best Thing. That's a new movie. And... Uh, could you guys remember who starred in the next best best thing by any No chance? idea. No, no idea. Uh, that would be Rupert Everett and Madonna. Oh, oh of Jesus. course. That classic. Yeah. Ugh. Two best friends, one a straight woman, Abby, the other a gay man, Robert, have decided to have a child together. Five years later, Abby falls in love with a heterosexual man and wants to move away with him and Robert's little boy, and a nasty custody battle ensues. That sounds like a marriage story before a marriage story. But with you know a little bit of a yeah, it's a Marriage Story with Madonna. If yeah. you didn't think I could hate Marriage Story anymore, <laughs> add fucking Madonna. Yeah, uh, Maron. Uh, Maron. Oh. Oh. <laughs> add Maron. Show no respect over here. <laughs> uh, third uh, movie was My Dog Skip. Fourth movie was Drowning Mona, which I'm gonna guess that you probably don't remember either. I remember. Drowning Mona the had name. Danny DeVito in it and yeah. Will Ferrell. It has Danny DeVito, Nev Campbell, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Bette Midler. I, I, That's a nice Mona you got here. It'd be a real shame <laughs> if, uh, I don't know, someone with a holder under the water. Hey, I'm drowning over here. Oh, I'm drowning here. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Um, what are the top songs? The top songs, uh, the number one, whatever you call it, the pop chart is Amazed by Lone Star. No idea. Uh, yeah, yeah, no idea. The country song, I guess. Uh, the On the alternative charts, there was The Other Side by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. How, yeah, long, great track. how long, how long? How long? Great, yeah, that great song jam. ruled, dude. Mm-hmm. Great jam. I mean, my dogs are barking outside. I don't know why. Uh, and then <laughs> in the UK, the number one song was American Pie by Madonna again. Madonna! <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. That's crazy. So that's, well, the, that's the way back machine. That's the way back machine. That's where we so were in back. America. We, we uh, you know, we were just listening to Madonna. We were content with the direction of America. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were ready for 
anything that would come next. No, we were not. Um, so let's get into this episode. Speaking of what comes next, uh, we're talking about the episode from season two, episode eight, um, the uh, full leather jacket. And uh, real quick, I'm just going to run down our Bada B stories. All right. So we got Richie wants to give Tony a jacket. Meadow wants to go to Berkeley. Carm wants a letter of recommendation to Georgetown for Meadow. Matt and Sean want respect. Chris hey. wants to marry Adriana. And Tony wants Richie to build a ramp for Beansy. Um, so I'm going to start off this uh with a quick question um as it pertains to the uh jacket storyline um <clears throat> and i'm gonna do it in my best jerry seinfeld voice what's the deal with this b story because <laughs> it is this episode and i know i kind of like i kind of did it up top by calling it the worst episode but this this to me is uh strangely bad episode of the sopranos it, yeah. it was it, i i i've rewatched this show tons of times and i didn't totally like i remember this episode vaguely but it, it just it's just the, not a memorable episode it's an episode i where don't know I, I i'm gonna disagree with you on that oh all right you enjoyed this episode well i mean it's not the best episode but there's there's things that are like momentous it's like yeah chrissy uh you know Asked her to get married, like that's a big step yeah, forward yeah. in that story. Uh, you know, Chrissy getting shot, obviously, the repercussions yeah. will, you know, spread out from that in, sure. in a myriad of ways. Um, I think we I mean, call it might this... not be the best episode, but I don't think it's forgettable. I think we call this, I, I call this a rebuilding episode in that it sets up a lot of storylines, but like on yeah, its sure. own, it sure. kind of. I do not enjoy it on its own, and it feels almost like the Modern Family uh, writing staff was like, "Hey, what if we wrote like an episode of The Sopranos?" Like, it's kind of, it's got all yeah, the very and, like sitcommy uh, storylines. Sure, it did feel, it did feel uh, super sitcommy to me. Uh, in fact, um, just I pulled some audio from just uh, the scene where um, uh, Richie tries to give Tony the jacket. Um, I actually like this scene. It's it's a it's a great scene, um, and I just uh, it's one minute of audio, and I have it uh, just I just recorded it straight up. There's nothing different about it. It's exactly what happens. So yeah, go ahead. This is exactly what happens in the episode. I got something for you. What's this? What's this? It's the jacket. <laughs> the jacket. The jacket. I took off Rocco De Mayo. Oh yeah, yeah. Cocksucker had the toughest reputation in Essex County, but he never came back after I got through with him. He later died of Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> he even sounds like the old guy in uh, Del Boca Vista. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Jack, what's his name? Jack. Yeah. Something. He sounds like the pen. <laughs> the pen, the pen, Jerry. This is the astronauts use this. <laughs> My kid brother, you would have killed for this jacket. So it's lining, fine <laughs> Corinthian leather. Nobody believed with my size I could carry this jacket. But with the belt, it was like Rommel. Uh, I love it was, love, nice it was like Rommel. It's a beautiful jacket. But it's yours to have. <laughs> Why? I gotta let go of the past. Like the tower says, you gotta shut one door before another one can open. Thanks. <laughs> I love, I love everything about that clip. Uh, I love everything. Uh, first of all, do you know how long it took me to make that goddamn clip? <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? It was worth it. It was worth every was, second of it. It was absolutely worth every every second. I'm sure now we're gonna we're gonna double our listenership just from that clip alone. <laughs> but but uh, just the this the scene itself, but not just the scene, the storyline of the jacket to me reads is the most sitcom-y I think the show's ever gotten. Like the only thing that wasn't sitcom-y about it was that there was no follow-up after right. Richie sees the jacket on, um, you know, on one of his maids. Like right. he, he sees the jacket uh, right. and then he just gets well, mad, but there's no follow-up about it whatsoever. If this were Curb Your Enthusiasm, he would have confronted him and that's where the comedy is. But in general, right. it was like every scene with Richie other than them talking about him building Beansy a ramp, it was just like this jacket. What the a great jacket. jacket. 
Yeah. Where where's the jacket? It literally was the guy from Del Boca Vista saying, oh, yeah. this pen. Well, the jacket. No, it's it's like I I kept expecting there to be some element of menace in there like you got you got the feeling that something bad was going to happen with his jacket but then by the end it's like, "Oh no, he's basically just like the Kenny Banya of this episode." Yeah, yeah. There was no it's- you expect like what is he giving up? Uh, by by taking this gift from Richie, yeah, like you, you're trying to you're trying to see what his motive is because up until this point, his motives have never been anything other than sinister. Right. Like he he's he, he, up until this point, you know, everything he's done is to spit in the face of kind of like the new order where Tony is the head of New York or of New Jersey. Yeah, you and, think he's you fucking know, it, with him or something, and then it's like, oh no, he just wanted him to wear this jacket, I guess. Yeah, he just he I think he like he honestly thought that this jacket that this gift was going to impress Tony in some way. It it, it was strange cuz it just kind of felt out of character for him. And even the I thing with it, Oh, go ahead. I think it was like illustrative of like his mindset is in the old way. Yeah. Like like b- back in the day this would have been like oh a gesture, like this is a big deal, but like he hasn't come around to the new way of thinking and and he's clearly incapable of doing it. It's just a weird way to illustrate that because it's like, oh yeah, this guy definitely wants to wear a 30 year old jacket. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like it, because of the, the sentimental value for Richie does not meet the sentimental value for Tony. Like Tony is like, I don't, I barely remember this. I think I kind of remember it. Sure. I'll take the jacket. But I, and part of me goes like, I think the fact that Richie brought up this jacket, this gift every time that uh, he and Tony had a scene together, I think that spurred Tony to like just give it away to someone else. But at the same time, Tony would have like wanted him to see someone else wearing the jacket. So I don't think he could have actually like uh, engineered it so that he was there at the exact time that his maid was there. Um, it, it just felt, it just, it felt super curb. It felt yeah. very curb your enthusiasm. I, I did appreciate the cultural reference of, uh, Corinthian leather. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I have the origin of, uh, Corinthian leather. If you've never, I don't know anything about Corinthian le- leather. Tell me about it. Uh, well, I'll just let you hear it. Pride. Very cornerstone of a new automobile. Cordoba, the new small Chrysler. Here is the warmth of thickly cushioned contour seats, available even in fine Corinthian leather. So very luxurious, yet surprisingly affordable. Cordoba is engineered with great pride via Chrysler. It's uh, it's the is... <laughs> it's the Ricardo Montalban commercial for the Chrysler. That was the Cordoba. sexiest car ad ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why is fuck? my dick hard? <laughs> yeah. Why am I Why am I fucking turned on right now? Why, why am I coming? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and that the, is and the, and the leather was manufactured in Jersey, so I don't know if it would be like a Jersey thing. Uh, yeah, it could be the like the best kind of leather. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we 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 got the best cows. We make the best leather. We went no to the best tannery. It. it was it was just like it was one of those storylines that I think in in any other episode with not with Richie. Like if it had been like fucking I don't know if it had been Matthew Bevilacqua. Yeah, that 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 gave it or like someone someone who's like less. I don't know, less important and and has less of a defined character. It'd be an interesting way to define a character, but instead it felt kind of like, I don't know, it was weird to me. To me, it was like strange. Don't get me wrong. When I shit on this episode, I am not saying this is a bad episode of television. It's coming from a place of love. It comes from a place of love. (laughs) Sure. I I absolutely love the Soprano. I mean, like even their worst episodes are better than most TV shows' entire runs. So... It was it was a fine episode compared to television in general. Sure. For for the Sopranos, I just thought like, yeah, it just kind of felt like it was all set up. It was all it was set up for uh, a lot of different things and and yeah. and you didn't really It's just that uh, storyline is weird cuz you expect there to be an ulterior motive uh and it totally. just kind of never comes and you're like, "Wait, what was he just he really just wanted Especially, to give him a jacket? What the fuck?" 
Especially given that the other storyline with Richie at this point is that he uh, beat a man so bad and ran him over with his car that the dude is paralyzed now and cannot walk. And as a gesture, they're like, can you please make make his home, uh, I don't know, ADA compliant? (laughs) I Uh, love when uh, Paulie and Silvio come in in the beginning and they sit down with Richie. And then, like, he's like, "Are you kidding me?" And 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 Paul is just like, "You're gonna fucking build that ramp. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna fucking build the ramp. <laughs> You're gonna fucking build that ramp." Which he then says something that um, I think Vince, you had a question about, which was, "Quote: I'll build a ramp up to your ass. Drive a Lionel up there." Yeah, what does that yeah. mean? No I idea. Think, I think that's a uh, like a uh, brand of eighteen wheeler, like tractor trailer, oh. or maybe it's a train. Maybe it's a train, a Lionel. That that sounds right. It would make sense. Um, yeah. You know, uh, being that, I mean, like a, a ramp would would be something that a truck right. drives. Maybe up. it's a car. I don't know. Oh yeah, could I be just, a car. I just googled it, and it's a model train. It's a model, model train. train. Yeah, Lionel model trains. Well, there we Is go. That- Right. Yeah. Okay. I like that. <laughs> That's interesting because it's not a full size train. It's like he specifically <laughs> yeah. made it uh, anatomically right. possible. It's something to... you could actually cram in someone's ass. <laughs> exactly. It's like you actually could get a model train in someone's asshole. That does seem. <laughs> that seems right. Um, which, by the way, oh, you, that's definitely, interesting... you definitely can. Yeah. That's oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's it's definitely possible. You could definitely get that in there. <laughs> All right. Well, what Vince, have you? Right. Have oh, you no, tried to I, stick I just, a lion? No, just, just believe me. I just believe no. Me. Just trust me that you could definitely get it in there. I just you could uh, you could get a whole blue comet up there. Hey, that's Ew. another train reference. Remember from later oh. in the series, which it, it leads me to believe the fact that it's uh, this is like a a model train very specifically. There's one rider, or. <laughs> Someone, one producer on The Sopranos who really loves right. model trains. Hey, you know, you got a real nice asshole here. Be a real shame. <laughs> I'm just saying. Be a real one shame. One would construct a ramp. I don't know. I just, I just spitballing here. Uh, I think. It's, yeah, they, it's, did they have a British writer? Because like that would be a tell. Because the British, uh, they do love, like trains. They love old timey trains yeah. for whatever reason. There's a lot of model train content in Sopranos as a show too. So. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a definitely a model train heavy series. Um, yeah. which is you know, hey, neither here nor there. I'm I think I'm ambivalent on model trains personally, but I certainly like it as a detail in someone's you know uh, backstory. Sure. Yeah. Um. That, that's so def- the next. Yeah, yeah. That, that's definitely my least favorite uh, B story. What do we think about you know uh, Carmela wanting Meadow not to go to Berkeley? Okay, so this is uh, this is I think my favorite B story in the entire series. Uh, really? Really t- no, no, no. In the entire episode. Excuse okay. me. Okay. Like, <laughs> no, wow. whoa. You no, in the Berkeley episode. Drama. There's there there was a lot of uh, you know there were some some interesting stories going on but this one uh, I liked a lot um, just because uh, every episode or maybe every other episode of The Sopranos has uh, fits into uh, a theme which is a segment we have called the real gangster uh, in which <laughs> you find out who the real gangster is because it's never Tony Tony is right. never the real gangster it's always like capitalism or the sure. banks or whatever right. and in this case. Uh, the real gangster uh, is uh, the uh, academia industrial complex and <laughs> yes, he- exactly and, and helicopter parents. So right because this is I think the Fox, first. I think this is someone asking you what are you yeah. doing in there, <laughs> Carl? Why are you yelling about? Why are you yelling in an Italian voice? I'm podcasting. Right. What the fuck is going on? Hey, I'm I was going to go on over here. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm podcasting, podcasting over here. Uh, but yeah, they uh, like this is Carmela um, at her most uh, gangster wife, you know? Yeah, yeah like definitely. like she's she's taking full advantage of the fact that she's a mob wife. Um, so the 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 show starts out, um, or this episode starts out with uh, Meadow wanting to or expressing the fact that she wants to go to Berkeley, and it being shot down by both Tony. And Carmella. And I think, I believe we have a, a clip of that. Mm-hmm. If I can get in there, that means I probably can get into Berkeley. Over my dead body. There are more Nobel Prize winners in the San Francisco Bay Area than anywhere on the planet. Nobel Prize for what? 
packing fudge. Oh, I got think, him! I think <laughs> I got him. The best part of that was just the look that Carmela gives after he says that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. doesn't say anything, but she gives that Tony. Yeah, oh Tony, oh, you are Tone. always you're always saying such such hateful things about gays <laughs> at the table. You're you know always who, doing hate speech. You know who actually got the Nobel Prize for packing fudge? It's uh, the guy who founded Lionel Trains. Oh, <laughs> he got so much fudge on those little model trains. Go, go, go. <laughs> so, so stupid. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, then, you know, once it becomes clear that. It's uh, like you're using Gabagool to punctuate the worst jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like hey, listen the, the, no matter how many episodes of the sopranos i watch i for some reason can't remember but one or two different uh italian uh bits of italian slang or just so, you, just you coming and yelling um but yeah uh so, so Tony uh, and Carm uh, very much against Meadow going to Berkeley for now. They don't actually get into the reasons why, but I think um, it, it's established later in the series that one of the reasons that they wouldn't want that is because of the fact that it's so far away. That, yeah, and I thought that the was fact that, fairly obvious. No, I mean I don't really think no. They, not in this episode. They don't really say well, why. Carm says. Carm says like, oh, she's trying to run away from us, and, and Tony's like, yeah, of course, that's his job. She's a teenage girl. She wants to. Right, right, but I mean, it does seem like I mean, unless she went to whatever the closest college is, I guess right. it'd be like Rutgers or something. Mm -hmm. Like right. you know, whether or not if it's certainly it is harder to get all the way to California than it is to get you know to you know somewhere else in New Jersey. Sure, um, but. It also seems to me like it would maybe be a better tactic to just be like, well, the reason we don't want you going there is because it's so far and because we love you. <laughs> like, what if they just are, said are that? Are you saying that Carm and Tony could be better parents? I'm saying maybe more emotionally available and, wow. and you know, a little wow. less manipulative. Instead, like, yeah. I don't think it's going to make... I don't think it's going to make Meadow feel like not going if you're just like, everyone there's gay. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that's not going to work. Well, but uh, the way yeah. that conversation started was that they found out that Hunter was going to read. And yeah. Tony said, Tony said, Sayonara, which I didn't get at first because I was like, is that a, like an Asian thing? But uh, I think that is just because like Reed is also on the West Coast. And oh, is is that where? Because I didn't know where Reed is. Yeah, it's in Oregon, I guess, which I didn't know. Oh, all right. Um, but yeah. So yeah, I I, I so kind I of assume the the subtext there. That that could be the subtext there. It could also be. Um, there's this thing where they believe for some reason that uh, Hunter is a bad influence on Meadow. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, that's what I thought. Larry Tony's like, hey, good riddance. Like good hey, riddance. Bye. Yeah, they for some reason think Hunter. I love, by the way, that they think Hunter is a bad influence because they never, <laughs> yeah, they never really like show Hunter doing anything wrong or bad. They just decided, just based on the way she looks or the way <laughs> they hang out, they were just like, she's a bad apple. And uh, yeah, but they they don't like her, so they were like, Sayonara. That was my guess. Um, but yeah, then uh, Carmela takes it upon herself uh, to try to get meadow into georgetown and the way that she decides to do that is try to get a letter of recommendation from genie kuzumano their neighbor from genie's sister who is a high-powered attorney alumnus of uh of georgetown and uh i thought the scene first of all i thought the scenes between uh carmella and genie were really great because yeah you could tell you know uh they did a good job of like genie really doesn't like living next to a, ma uh, right. a, a mafioso especially right. you know like the fucking king of new jersey um and there and also there's a bit of it is that she's embarrassed not so much af she's afraid but she's also embarrassed that these like low lives are in her life at all and so like her even talking to her sister about this like she right. apologizes she's a like oh times. i fucked up i fucked up 
Yeah, and, and, and which is it's an interesting theme uh, overall in the Sopranos, which is that like there's there's two different types of like right. upper up, upwardly mobile uh, yeah, it's the Italian Americans. Politics of respectability. Right, exactly, and it's like you know you're respectable if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a fucking you know professor, um, but if you're you know a mafioso, right. which I mean I get it, but also uh, you know in terms of who I would rather have a you know go to dinner with i'd much rather go to dinner with tony and carm than i would oh, fucking sure. you know uh dr melfi's family oh, dr melfi and her me. family and oh right. god um so my favorite scene i think in this episode was uh when carmella visits uh genie's sister and threatens her uh yeah to, with, uh, with a regat pie with pineapple the best yeah, kind of threat it it was it's it's a pretty great scene because it just like it shows her being like a helicopter parent um and uh and also like you're you're a little bit afraid of like how far I she's made, you to take this. Yeah, like, exactly. I made you a pie. Yeah, exactly. I made you a pie. I made you a fucking pie. I made you a fucking regal pie. Yeah, enjoy the regal. Uh, <laughs> and, Matt, do I need I to have... translate regal pie for you? Ricotta. <laughs> yeah, so it's basically like an Italian cheesecake. Right. Oh, I didn't know. So that. good, so good. Oh, that I've sounds never amazing. Made it. I've never made it. I, we never had it. I, I don't think I've ever had one, but it sounds good. I've never. I don't think I've ever had one with pineapple. I'm pretty sure she says pineapple. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. A nicer gold pie. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. it's it sounds delicious. Uh, I mean, just because it's a, an Italian dessert, it sounds fucking amazing. Sure, sure. But I had no idea what a uh, ricotta pie was. But uh, give you me know. a ragot pie over a cannoli any day of the week. Any yeah. day. I would take it. Uh, go. Oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> but I ain't, I, I, I ain't sucking no cream out of a tube over here. Oh, yeah. I, what you think? I'm a fucking fanook. No, uh, I'm gonna eat it from a pie like a real man. A real man <laughs> eats pies, not cannoli. <laughs> All right, we got the clip. I well, the clip. I thought you would at least want to take a look at her grades and her SAT scores and some teacher comments before you made up your mind. I think she would be a wonderful addition to the Georgetown campus. Then I'm sure the admissions officers will see that. Well, I'm not sure that's true. The sad fact is that's just not enough these days. I'm sorry, Carmela, but I, I can't do it. I don't think you understand. I want you to write that letter. Excuse me? I said I want you to write the letter. Are you threatening me? Threat what threatening? <laughs> I brought you a regard pie and a high school transcript so you could write a letter of recommendation for my little daughter to Georgetown. I'm an officer of the court. A lawyer. I I a really lawyer. do enjoy that she goes, I'm Arm an officer flexes. of the court. I'm an officer of the court, and then you're a lawyer. A lawyer. <laughs> yeah. An officer of the court is something that like the a high class person would call exactly. themselves. Hey, yeah. I'm an officer of the court. You're a lawyer. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Please. but that's again. So first of all, this whole storyline. Once again, uh, we've. I feel like we're in an episode of fucking Home Improvement where the girl's playing her own twin sister. Like that seems like something that's <laughs> very much like fucking Al Borland would have to do. Uh, sure. You know, but uh, and then. I, I, if I squint, I can kind of enjoy this storyline with Carmela because, you know, the idea is that she sort of put aside her own w hopes and dreams uh, to marry Tony, and she, you know right. she's in this very repressed uh, existence. And now, like now that she wants one thing, she's like, well, I can, you know, she's borrowing some of her husband's uh, right. extortionary tactics because sure. like, this is the one thing that she wants. But uh, right. so I, I get that. But then but then when it manifests itself in the actress playing her own twin sister and like there's no there's not there's not like a oh, scene. Oh, I didn't get that. There's not like a scene where it comes to a head, you know, like like Carmela kind of leans on her, but she doesn't like that. We don't really understand uh, the Cusimano chicks change of heart like she just kind of does it. It, I mean, I thought I thought it was fear, um, but you're right. It, it does kind of resolve in this way where it'd be like, you know, if I were the lawyer, I'd be like, what are they going to do? They're going to fucking kill me over a letter of recommendation? Right. Well, that's like, what she says. And then, like, she has some sort of change of heart, but it's an off screen change of heart. Yeah, right. I did. I did particularly love uh, the kind of uh, subtle uh, lib bashing that was going on, whereas like I've already given my letter of recommendation to a right, exactly. sweet 
Puerto Rican boy. He's his mother was a crackhead, and it was just like <laughs> yeah. oh, they were just like mm, poor thing, you know. Right. Uh, that was I thought that was By the very way, good. Do they still do letters of recommendation because like talk about oh, a yeah. completely fucking worthless practice. Like I don't know. I mean, I had to do I had to get a letter of recommendation when I like ten years ago tried to go back to school to be a teacher. I mean, Matt so- asked me for one when I was coming on the podcast. I was actually really surprised. Yeah. Well, I just I was like, like I've to... been on other podcasts. He's like, just send the letter. Please we'll send see. the letter recommendation, and I would like to see <laughs> uh, your school transcripts from when you were a child. <laughs> I mean, like I've had to get them, but they were always bullshit. Like you ask some professor that you barely know, uh, and you're like, hey, yeah. can you write this thing? And then they do, and it's like they just like write. And the a weird bunch thing of about it is bullshit for you. I I also feel like let's be honest you could just fake one of those right right yeah right you could just fake one i got i could just write a letter from anyone i mean maybe not the president but even then how are you going to check up on that that and you then like check. the college administ- the admissions process like the idea behind it is that they're trying to make it this meritocracy and not based right. on connections and then they just like right. completely go back on themselves like oh also uh in addition to the supposedly uh, merit, meritocratic grading system and standardized testing. Could you also tell us who who your cronies are, please? Yeah, right. Who's yeah. the real hypocrite? Here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It is again the real gangster academia real gangster. industrial complex. There you that's, go. That's who it is. You know, they just it's all about connections. That's yeah. all. It's about. Um, it's about who you also, know, and uh, you know, Meadow knows uh, how to make a regat pie. I mean, and, and you know, it's kind of like it's the two different worlds of, of who's in the two different clubs in the two different worlds. You know, one has got like the ivory tower world uh, and the other is the, you know, the bottom runs bay. the street, runs the street. Yeah, they're exactly. almost like twin siblings, like the Kusumano twins, you know? Sure. It's so weird. I mean, they're literally <laughs> twins. But uh, so I actually did not get that at all. That is just. Neither did the, I. I, I actress, totally miss that. If that yeah, was the I same missed actress. that completely. The actress is playing her own twin sister. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. Funny. That se- seems they did seems a great ridiculous. Job. The, the wig fooled me clearly. It did. It worked. I mean, I this know is... all Italians look the same to you guys, but they do. <laughs> they all look very similar. It's a lot of big noses. <laughs> Speaking of big noses, um, the <laughs> next great segue. character. Great segue. Yeah, yeah. Th- thank you. Thank you. You know, I'm great at segues on the show. Um, so the next storyline that we get into uh, here is um, uh, Matthew Bevilacqua and Sean Gismati. Gismati? Gismonti? Yeah, I think so. Gismonti. Yeah, Sean Giz. Gismonti. Um, and uh, they, this is actually, it was not actually a good segue because of the fact that I have to somehow now get to when Richie April is talking to them and talking shit about Chris. Right. But, uh, uh, there's too much backstory to go on. So, so the the, yeah, the big a- story here is that Matt and Sean um, are basically doing small time cat burglaring with Chris in order to uh, make their way in in the mafioso world. Yeah. Hey, hey Tony, how the fuck's it going? How you doing? Matt Drapeau and Evil Bevelag was nephew. My partner, Sean, just Monty. Friends of Christopher, we're at the executive car game. Yeah, I know. How you doing? That dancer, that's an out there. I like to break my dick off in that ass, huh? See, I I love that scene. I love in, it in particular because they want to relate to him. And one of the yeah. things they actually say is like, they're like, "Oh shit, Tony's here." Oh, we 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 should have said hi or something. And then Sean goes, "Yeah, or at least ask him what time it is." Which is, <laughs> and then they use Banaka. Yeah, just to me, I'm just like, yeah, because if you know him giving you the time. That's the same as like talking to him about anything. And then they go to the bathroom just to talk about how they'd like to fuck women. It's a I'd like to violently fuck her. Like you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. I I would like to fuck her so bad that I am horribly disfigured for the I rest of my, my goddamn penis. life. My penis is injured for life. Yeah, I, I have love no to more penis. lose my dick in her <laughs> ass. Like if my dick just stayed in her ass forever. And I would be okay with it. It's kind that of would be fine. That that would be fine by me. I can't. I really got to work on my Italian accent. I am not Ooh. good. Oh, not cool. Um. So, their yeah, their entire storyline. Um. 
up until this point, it, it actually is just kind of the same thing. They they are kind of just like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. You know, they're just they're going around. They always fuck up. You know, they always look like douchebags. They're always trying to get Tony's attention, and Tony always yells at them for trying. Um, I feel like and- this storyline. I like that these guys are stupid, but I feel like they yeah. went full Homer Simpson in this uh, episode. Yeah, they did. Yeah, no, you're not. You're not wrong. It was like. There's a level of idiocy that they they hadn't um, like the Sopranos is good when they do idiots who are more subtle. You yeah, know? like Polly Walnuts like, is a bright is like he's just uh, like the right character. amount of believability oh, yeah. mixed with stupidity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like you you want to believe that at the very least that they hold themselves up to be like these very serious gangsters and they continue to talk as serious gangsters no matter how fucking no matter what dumb thing they are saying whereas right. like these guys are just buffoons and um and it it really I think it speaks to the kind of like weakness of their storyline that like I and I again I've rewatched the Sopranos a thousand times I completely forgot what happened to them? And I actually confuse what happened to them with is uh, with what happens with um, J- little Jackie yeah. April, yeah. Um, yeah. Jackie Junior, yep. Jackie Junior. Yeah, I, yep. I thought, uh, and that's in season three, I believe. And it's like that. It, no, it's a completely. It's like Jackie Junior was the Sopranos writers trying to redo uh, right. Matt and Sean. That's right. what it sure. feels like. So, like let's yeah. let's let's make it l- them less of these like dumbass characters right. and give some depth so, to them. So my like conspiracy theory on this is, so this episode is forty three minutes. It's the shortest of the series, yeah. and um, almost every storyline in this episode feels like it's missing a scene. Like the like the Matt Matt Bevilacqua storyline feels like it's missing a scene where they would think it was a good idea to kill Christopher. The right. uh, the Genie Cusimano storyline. Feels like it's missing the change of heart scene, uh, sure. And right. the leather jacket storyline feels like it's missing the moment, uh, you know, where we understand what fucking what's what what he's going for with the leather right. jacket. So, like, I, I, part of me wonders whether this episode was just too long, and then they ended up having to like hack out a couple of key scenes, or it really feels to me like a collection of. Of B stories with no A story right. whatsoever. Yeah, like, like the, it, it feels like these are just like okay, we can throw these into any episode and it's a viable uh, B story and it'd be fun to watch. But it's kind of like you know y- you're more interested in what's going on, you know, with whatever the A story is. And in this case, it feels like there's no real A story, which is why the the episode's name is full le- is full leather jacket. It is literally. The episode is the jacket. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's and, the A story. <laughs> and it feels like they, like they put in the attempted murder at the end to give it something, even though like it's not really set up. But you know, they just had to make it. They had to. They had to like force a B story into an A story by having it end with an attempted murder. It makes you wonder how they write these episodes. You know, uh, like with this show in particular, like. I mean, for sure, they do it like any other TV show in which, like, they know that... You put that... your index cards on the corkboard, just yeah. like everybody else, Just right? like everyone else. You gotta get the corkboard first. If you want to be a professional writer, buy a corkboard. There's a nice corkboard you got here. It'd be a shame if somebody... It'd be a shame if some... someone put a, a bunch of B stories unconnected <laughs> to a viable A story on here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it just, it does feel like, uh, they knew that they had to shoot Chris because Chris is shooting. I think it does. It's, you know, it, it needs, I don't know if it needs to happen, but it is something that like they, I could see them, you know, at the beginning of writing the season and plotting out right. all of the They're different like, put off one card. Yeah. The, the shooting of Christopher Moltisanti and we'll get to it. Yeah. And then like when they were like, OK, uh, we've used up every good a story, every viable one. And then they're like, all right, all that's left. Let's just uh, just throw them all in. We'll get the jacket in there. We'll right. put uh, fucking, you know, Meadow wants to go to college in there. You know, we'll, Christopher's we'll going to get... propose. Yeah. And right. I did love Chris proposing, by the way. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I was a that huge was a fan scene. of it because of the fact that it's like 
that's to me is it was a very Sopranos proposal in that like it is a stupid yeah. guy proposing. Adrian the bomb is great too. Yeah, the mother the mother is fantastic. Adriana is great in that you know it's everyone is just you know I, and again this is a kind of everyone is being an Italian stereotype stereotype times twenty, but like. Sure. It is still very, uh, it's it's very subtle and funny. I, I have a clip of that. I'm dialing 911. Give me the phone. Go in the other room. Ow. Ow. I want to marry you. What? I mean it, Adriana. I love you. I want to marry you. Got you a ring and everything. I got you a ring and everything as a proposal mm -hmm. is, I think that is a, that is peak. So, it's, uh, so romantic. I mean, I also after shoving shoving your mom sharply <laughs> yeah. too. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, shoving I... your mom, telling her get the fuck out of here. She as she threatens to call the cops. Yeah, and then I also like, I want to marry you. I got a ring. I also assaulted my future mother in law right before I proposed. It's a traditional <laughs> Italian uh, way. Yeah. Of proposing. Yeah. Exactly. It's like the most like Italian mobster trash way. To it's like it's almost out of fucking West get Side out of the way, Story. Old bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just stealing her marble rye. Yeah, steals her marble rye right before. Give me the daughter, you old bag. <laughs> yeah, um, but I did, I did love that, and there was, you know, they they set up Adriana and Chris, you know, kind of like Chris deciding that he is going to dedicate his life to, uh, you know, being a middle management grifter for a uh, for the mafia, and uh, and the fact that. That gets um, spoiled by uh, Matt and Sean. And uh, so Matt and Sean have the idea of shooting Chris kind of out of nowhere. But I think based on a conversation they had with Richie April when they were uh, introduced to Richie. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, Vince, do you have a clip of that? I do, yeah. Richie. Danny. Rich, this is Matthew Bevilacqua. And Sean Giusmonti, they're both from West Orange. I'm back to using drink water. It's fucking good to meet you, Richie. My cousin Louis Giusmonti, he worked with the prison sign shop at East Jersey State. Oh, yeah, Lou. 5'8", about 225. I'm taking him over to my Uncle Joey's lot to look at IROX, and uh, they asked if they could come by and say hello first. You've been doing some things with Christopher Maltesante, huh? Yeah, you know, listen that. The attitude on that camel nose fuck. He ever lays his hand on my niece again. I'm gonna tear them apart piece by piece. Camel nose, <laughs> man, you can't make that shit up. What the fuck are you talking about? I just did. Did you ever notice he's the only motherfucker who can smoke a cigarette in the rain with his hands tied behind his back? That nose is uh, like natural canopy. <laughs> <laughs> so I like, um, on, on a previous episode, uh, was it Anna that, or no, it was uh, Shireen. Shireen. Yeah, so brought up the fact that uh, Shireen Richie, has a theory. Richie, she has a theory that Richie seems to be gay for Beansy. Um, and then. And, and not just gay for Beansy, but like that he is closet gay. Yeah. Wow. And, and okay. It, it, feels, uh, it feels correct in this episode because, you know, uh, Richie goes. The first thing he says about him is that he, he gives his height and his weight. And then there's yeah. also the scene where Furio comes to collect from uh, Chris and Matt. And he sees that they like have an apartment together where they sleep in bunk beds, and uh, and he, like smells his underwear and says that scene is so good. I love <laughs> yeah. that scene. Yeah, but I mean the you know Richie, you know be saying oh right Lou uh, like you've you've jogged my memory about uh, Sean's cousin Lou. Uh, He's five foot eight and he's about two twenty five. Like, there's part of me that was just like, just knowing that I don't know, it fits into her theory, right? And, and also, so does the fact that uh, Matt and and uh, Jiz, right? What what's Jismata? Sean yeah, Jismata. Sean, yeah, Sean and Matt. Like they want they uh, they betray Christopher to try and join uh, Richie's crew. Which uh, oh. so like they if they're gay for each other and they want to be part of the other. Okay, well, but now you're adding. Cases. Wow, you're going deep. You're, you're going, going deep. deep on this. You're going deep. Now you're adding Matt and Sean to the mix there, which is possible. Uh, I mean, I know, didn't I say it. F Furio said it. And then also, um, and I think sure. very importantly, what does Richie want to do um, with a ramp? He wants to put one in Polly's <laughs> ass and drive <laughs> a Lionel true. through there. Yeah. 
That's like true. just the creativity he wants to of being like a Lionel train filled with fudge into another yeah. guy's ass. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's That's an interesting. That's how you get the PhD in packing fun. Yeah. You do that. That's your thesis. <laughs> and my thesis, I put a train into a guy's ass. And I'm a PhD. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's definitely like you know the things add up. It is it's one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite fan theories of The Sopranos that Richie is closet uh, closet gay. I got my MFP. I, like, I never heard that. Here. I like that. Yeah. Um, my master's but, uh, of fudge packing. So <laughs> this <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> so and that is um, just that conversation, uh, you know, with Richie is what drove Matt and Sean to decide to try. Well, they to- also have that other conversation, a scene that I really like, where they're sitting in the bang and yeah. they're like, they're like, "What do we do? Like, look at us, we're pathetic." Yeah, yeah. Uh, where a tit I, I is really like that scene. Where a tit is literally like the f- the foreground of the scene, where it's just like yeah. A, yeah. It's like a zoomed in tit and then it zooms in on their faces. Yeah. And, and you know, I do and love... They're sitting the, there the, with naked women dancing around them and they're trying to figure out how to impress guys. Yeah. And yeah. they're just... Yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. But they're also, you know, he's like, you know, what are we doing? I, I got my fucking stockbroker's yeah. license. It's and, like that scene where uh, George and Jerry are like, we're not men. No, we're not men. <laughs> <laughs> where they're like, we need to make some changes. We need to make some fucking changes. I'm telling you, dude. This is this is the most Seinfeld episode of this show. It, it really is, and and you know, I love Seinfeld. I'm not talking shit. It's a great show. It's a show yeah. about nothing, but this is a show about something, and and the fact that it was it just kind of like seemed to meander from one kind of B story to another without really ever like congealing into maybe uh, a an full, episode that could a full regret pie. Until congealing into a full regard. Yeah. Uh, right. That it was just a problem that I had. And them shooting Chris. And then, of course, Sean getting killed in that inter- uh, that interchange. Uh, that's a great scene. It's, it is. It is a great scene because of the fact that what I love about it is Sh- Sean gets killed. And then he just yells, jizz, which is, <laughs> you know, Again. F- fits into your new theory that they are also uh, gay. Yeah. Um, but you- then also. Also runs over to Richie to tell him, like, we're with you now, right. um, which is a ridiculous assumption because, you know, you can't just fucking kill, you know, uh, a guy who's mobbed up. I yeah. mean, it, it, like, Chris wasn't made yet, but killing him and then trying to, like, hide behind Richie was, I thought that was, that's maybe one of the best parts of it. The fact that, like, he just immediately is like, get out of here before I fucking kill you. Yeah, well, that, yeah. I mean, that was clearly a stupid move. Um, oh yeah. Also, did you recognize uh, why Jizz died in that scene? He got shot in the head. Well, yeah, well, yes, he but, but he, he was trying to get his seatbelt off. And in the oh. previous episode, uh, Livia <gasps> tells the horror story about like the kids who died because they oh, were right. trapped in their car and they couldn't get their seatbelt off. So like, oh wow, was that a callback? I don't know. That's very good, Vince. This is, I got to say, that's too good for this podcast. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of hate fan theories, but I don't know. Yeah. The, if you want shit like that, go to any other podcast. But here we talk about this show because it has titties and because it has guns. Those are the things we like. And a lot of good regat pies. I um, really liked uh, Chrissy's ankle rig, speaking of guns. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was he, nice. He pulls out the ankle piece on him. Yeah, you got to have that ankle piece ready you for when you're shot. You got to have that ankle shot. rig, baby. You don't know. When you're shot in the middle of the street and you're down, you got to reach for it. a gun, you find it, get yourself a good ankle rig. Um, All right. And now, uh, just real quick, it is time for our uh, segment. It's the 90s. Hell yeah. It's the 90s. Parents are supposed to discuss sex with their children. It's the 90s. It's, it's the 90s. <laughs> 90s. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I, I mostly do this segment because I like that uh, fucking uh, bumper so much. Um, just real quick, uh, a couple of 90s things that I noticed about this. Because although the show is now in the 2000s, the production happened in the 90s. It's still a yeah. 90s show. It's before um, 9-11, spiritually. Yeah. Anything, yeah, yeah. anything 90s. before 9-11, that's 90s, which means that we're going to get all the way to like season four and still call the show 90s. Um, so 
the two things Americans I noticed... Americans were still largely content with the nation's direction at this point. Right. That's very true, which the, means they were content... Gore and Bush fellow. I have, I have good things. I feel good about this. This should yeah. be a good and fair election. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing untoward will happen. Yeah. I like these gentlemen. Good, two good gentlemen. Both I'm are gonna good take, options. I'm going to take a big sip of coffee before I count these ballots. <laughs> <laughs> um... So the 90s things I noticed is one was at one point Meadow yells at her mother. I'm sorry, you could have just paged me, which is very 90s. <laughs> yeah. And then also, um, the, if you, I don't know if you guys caught it, but in the jacket scene, the very opening of the scene, the grift that they are discussing is that R Richie and Junior are running a pirated DVD scam. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's just very random and like the it opens the scene opens with Junior telling Tony, uh, yeah, this guy he got the mummy before it was even out in theaters. Yeah, which, like a flex. <laughs> we had the mummy two months before theatrical release, Tom. Yeah, yeah. You could watch the mummy from the comfort of your own home. <laughs> hey, not for nothing. I think this Brendan Fraser is gonna be a big star. <laughs> I like this kid. I like this kid. I'm sure nothing untoward will happen to his career. I mean, not that anything really bad happened other than like, I think he got divorced and it made him go a little crazy. Uh, sure. Shout out to Brandon Frazier. Come on the pod. We know you listen. Um, other than that, um, yeah, no, didn't uh, didn't notice too much else. That was very 90s about this one. What about you, Vince? No, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, we got that. That's about it. And uh, in terms of uh, Gabla va fango, I didn't see, uh, I didn't hear any new Italian slang in this one. Did you? No, I mean, other than the regot pie, I mean, every time Matt Bevelock with talks, I can barely understand what he's saying. Uh, he might have had something in there that I just missed because he has marbles in his mouth. But he no, does. I did not, uh, I didn't hear too much. There's, yeah. a, there's actually a really funny moment where Richie brings the tripe and tomatoes to Carm. Right. Yeah. And he's like, we're, we're probably the only two left that like the tripe. Uh, and he kind of does like <laughs> making fun of an, like an old school Italian, uh, like yeah. saying tripe or something. Yeah. Yeah. A tripe. Because uh, he knows it's like super old school to like the tripe. Yeah, yeah, tripe is that's something that only you know old old Italians yeah, from the old that's country. That's some classic like. shit. Tripe and tomatoes. Have you had tripe and tomatoes? You're the food uh, podcast. Oh guy. yeah, I sure have. It's 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 really good. I never have. I've not had tripe and tomatoes. I've had like the Mexican version, but I've never had Italian tripe. It looks yeah, fucking it's like terrible. I think it's like braised, so it's super tender. Okay, uh, mm. at least the way I had it. Well, that sounds delicious. You gotta God like damn it. soak the tripe in the milk or something, yes. so it doesn't. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, you gotta get the shit out of there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you gotta unpack the fudge from the tripe. Yeah, this, <laughs> and this if, so weird. I got the intestines. There was a fucking model train in here. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Who put a Lionel in my tripe? <laughs> the Lionel in my fucking three five. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, yeah. In general. I think um, I can say that this is one of those episodes that you watch and you go like, oh, all right, well, can't wait for next week. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, yeah. It, um, it ends with Chris, uh, you know, in a hospital bed and Tony saying the lines, how could this happen? Which, by the way, <laughs> another kind of, I got to say, again, this is a weird thing to say. What do you mean, how could this, you're in the mafia. <laughs> you're right? in the mafia, sir. <laughs> Like I, I've, I have a pretty good idea how this could happen. Like the, the look that he has of just like, how could this? Ha like anything else? A if guy he who's was just already like, I, survived his own uh, attempted whacking. Uh, yeah, right, exactly. It, it, it's, it's just so strange to me because it, you, you just like you could have given him any line, any line at all. You could have given him just like, if I find out who does this uh, to the moon. Calm. <laughs> like, like, but like, how could this happen? Just felt it felt like over dramatic and just kind of, uh, I, I don't know, lazy. Just, just lazy in lazy. the manner of most of this episode. Like, it's this episode feels weirdly broad in a way right. that The Sopranos usually does not. They like all really wanted to go to lunch, and they're like, all right, let's just finish up episode eight, and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and then we'll get lunch. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's good. That's good. My tripe's yeah. getting cold. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Or warm, but yeah, I don't know. Is... Does he, do they eat it cold or warm? <laughs> oh, I just don't eat a cold fish. I'm someone who microwaves everything. Just microwave that tray. Tri 
It's a tripe is intestines, not fish. What? <laughs> tripe. That's intestines. not a type of fish? No. no. no it's the stomach lining. Oh, my lining. God. It's intestines. Oh, well, and now I know. It's my train joke. That, that, no, it makes sense, but I thought maybe that there was a train inside of the fish. Listen. No, it's in the intestines because it went up his asshole. All right, l- l- listen. I don't know anything about food. You guys can talk about food. I don't know we anything gotta about food. We got to give this guy food. some tripe and tomatoes over here. He hasn't lived. <laughs> I don't know anything about food. Gabagool! <laughs> Anyways, in general, uh, I thought uh, I'm very excited for the next episode. Um, but uh, while this may have been a not so good episode of The Sopranos, I have to say this has been a fantastic episode of Pod Yourself a Gun. Uh, Carl Hess, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, guys. This was a real pleasure. I'm glad. I'm glad. We'd love to have you back. You are also a big Sopranos fan. Uh, I, come, I've come watched back it more whenever. than any other show. Yeah, I'm, I'm always ready to talk to Brano. Hell yeah. And where can people find you online? Uh, I'm just at Carl Hess on Twitter and Instagram. That's K-A-R-L-H-E-S-S. And my podcast is at Yap Pod on Instagram. That's Y-A-P-P-O-D. Yelling about pate. Mm-hmm. You should listen to it. It is a great show. Why, why do you guys Yelling sing- about tripa. Why do you guys have to yell about the pate? That seems like more something that you would discuss uh, sotto voce. Oh, no. We get really excited. Those okay. are yelling. That's where, that's where the yelling comes from. Kind of like this. Sure, sure. Yeah. I'm excited about two things. Sopranos and pate. That's a good Trains in the ass and intestinal cuisine. I'm, I'm glad I learned about tripe. And now, there you go. look, I'm going to go. I, I want to train in my ass and intestines in my mouth. <laughs> I'm a guy who likes simple things. Is that so much to ask? Is that so much to fucking ask? Uh, email us, frotcast at gmail.com. That's F R O T C A S T at gmail.com. Uh, Patreon.com slash frotcast. Uh, that is uh, our Patreon for our other, our, our main show, the Film Drunk Frotcast, which you can check out the same place uh, you're checking out this show. Uh, Vince, what is the Google Voice number? 415-275-0030. All right. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. And until next time, don't stop believing. Hold on. Let me just make sure my level is good. Yo, what up? Fuck yeah, bitch. Hell yeah. (laughs) All right. I'm good. Oh. I'm I'm good. I'm ready. I'm I'm ready. ready to rock when you are. I'm ready.